shout out to my fingers. I can count on all of them. Today, I'm going to recap a 2009 action mystery film called Sherlock Holmes. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. London 1890, as a horse cart goes by in the middle of the night, with Dr. John Watson and Inspector Lestrade inside. The great detective Sherlock Holmes follows on foot. He is in a tremendous hurry as he darts between columns up and down stairs and around buildings effortlessly, and finally enters a nondescript building. Once inside, Holmes starts running down a spiral staircase, but pauses when he notices a henchman, waving a lantern and keeping watch. He analyses the situation, then takes out the henchman. He continues running down the stairs until he reaches the basement where a black magic ritual is taking place. Holmes hides behind a column to assess the situation again. In the center of the room, he observes a young woman in a white dress, tied to a table while a hooded figure stands over her, chanting in Latin. There are several hooded figures and henchmen around the room. Holmes begins calculating how to take them out, but is interrupted when a guard comes up from behind him. He fights with the guard, then Watson shows up and chokes the man till he is unconscious. Watson and Holmes race downstairs and attack the henchmen, overpowering most of them while the hooded figure continues the ritual. Back at the table, the girl reaches up for a dagger and decides to stab herself. After defeating the henchman, Holmes hurries over and stops her just in time. The hooded figure stops to greet Holmes by name and is unmasked as Lord Henry Blackwood. As he taunts Holmes, Watson comes running over but is stopped by Holmes. It is revealed Lord Blackwood is holding some kind of thin stiletto glass knife that would have pierced Watson through the nose if he had gotten any closer. Holmes directs Watson to attend to the girl while Lestrade and his men burst in, just in time. As Blackwood and the henchmen are arrested, Lestrade chides Holmes for not waiting for his orders. Holmes says that the girl's parents hired him, so he doesn't report to Lestrade. Before Lestrade can retort, a newspaper photographer who wants to take their picture interrupts him. Holmes throws up an arm and prevents him from capturing his face. Thus, all the credit is given to Lestrade instead. Three months later, at 221B Baker Street, Watson is treating an elderly patient. As he dresses, the patient asked about Watson's plans to move his medical practice to a new headquarters. Watson confirms that he is moving. The patient congratulates him on his nuptials, before nervously asking if Holmes is moving too. Watson says no, but is promptly interrupted by several gunshots that send both men ducking for cover. The patient leaps up, but Watson sues him by lying that Holmes is probably hanging a picture with nails and hammer. Watson goes out to check on the commotion and is met by Mrs. Hudson. She tells him that Holmes is in a mood, and she hopes that he can calm him down. The elderly patient comes out and is about to talk when there's a sound of gunfire again. Watson tells Mrs. Hudson to get the patient a cup of tea and he'll go see Holmes himself. He also asks Mrs. Hudson to bring some food to cheer up Holmes. Watson goes around his dark room while opening up the blinds. He starts rifling through Holmes's mail and offers him prospective cases to consider. Holmes flippantly solves all of them without a second thought. Watson also points out that Holmes is in the papers again, as Lord Blackwood is about to be hanged and Watson will be the attending physician, as he considers it a good way to conclude his final adventure with Holmes. Nothing seems to be cheering Holmes up, so Watson throws down the mail and tells Holmes that he needs to get out of the house. He tells Holmes that he's going to join him and his future fiancé for dinner at a London hotel. Holmes begrudgingly agrees. At an upscale restaurant, Holmes checks his watch several times before Watson and Mary Morstan show up. While they talk, Holmes's deductive powers come up. Mary expresses suspicion at Holmes's deduction skills. He points out several basic details about Watson simply from his walking stick, indicating that he is a decorated army veteran of the Afghan wars. Mary asks Holmes to analyze her over Watson's objections. He points out that she's a governess and has been engaged once before, but likely broke off the engagement because the fiancé wasn't wealthy enough for her. By this point, Mary is starting to become increasingly uncomfortable with Holmes's comments, but Holmes doesn't notice her discomfort or Watson's warnings. He continues rambling on. He also adds that she's probably trying to do better this time. Mary is extremely offended by his comment and tosses a glass of wine in his face. She then tells him that everything he said was true, but her first fiancé died. She then gets up to leave, thoroughly upset by Holmes's rudeness, and is followed by Watson. Holmes remains at the table and has his dinner alone. At Scotland Yard, 
the prison guards are trying to deal with a potential riot. In front of Blackwood's cell, a guard is suffering a seizure, and no one wants to be around him for fear of his black magic. One of the braver guards asks him what he wants, and he says that he wants to talk to Holmes as his final request. Meanwhile, Watson walks up the stairs at the Punch Bowl Tavern. He goes into a room where he finds Holmes under the influence of cocaine, strumming away at a violin. Holmes greets him and gestures to a bottle of flies that he has trapped. He tells Watson that when he plays a certain pitch, the flies will fly in a counterclockwise direction. Watson tells Holmes to get up and get decent, as Lord Blackwood has requested to see him. Watson brings Holmes to the prison. On the carriage ride over, Holmes attempts to engage Watson in conversation, but Watson rebuffs him. Finally, Watson punches Holmes in the nose and tells Sherlock that he already knew about Mary's previous fiancé. They bicker for a while and finally arrive at the prison. Most of the guards are afraid of getting too close to Lord Blackwood, so Holmes tells them that he can find his way on his own. Blackwood greets him and tells Holmes that he is not done killing just yet. He warns Holmes that there will be three deaths that will be unpreventable. Holmes leaves without paying much thought to his warnings. Blackwood is found guilty of murder is hanged and pronounced dead by Watson. However, the police find out that Lord Blackwood has somehow come back from the grave and is at large once more. Sherlock's former nemesis and the object of his fascination, Irene Adler, tasked Sherlock with finding a man named Riordan on behalf of her secret employer who intimidates the usually unfazed Irene. Sherlock finds Riordan's body inside Blackwood's coffin and gathers intel from the clues he and Watson find at Riordan's residence. A mystical secret society, the Temple of the Four Orders, hires Sherlock to catch Blackwood, who they fear has evil plans of world domination. Sherlock follows a series of clues and employs his prodigious powers of deduction to figure out Blackwood's plan. He teams up with Watson and Adler to take down Blackwood. After Sherlock and Irene disable the gas machine that was going to kill several members of Parliament, Irene runs away with the cyanide cylinders while Sherlock chases her. Blackwood, Sherlock, and Irene end up at the incomplete tower bridge, and a fight breaks out. Blackwood gets caught on a rope and dangles from the bridge. While Sherlock debunks his magic, spelling out his deductions, it turns out that Lord Blackwood had been using science and theatrics to make the world believe he is a powerful magician. Sherlock explains that Blackwood's father had been killed by a poisonous chemical that only becomes activated when water mixes with bath powder and copper. There was no trace of the deadly compound because the police had already drained the water by the time Sherlock reached the scene. The U.S. ambassador's death by fire also turns out to be a science trick, a combination of a highly flammable chemical substance on his clothes and a spark igniting from his gun, when he attempted to shoot at Blackwood, causes him to erupt in flames. Sherlock also reveals that those who were on Blackwood's side were unknowingly protected from the fatal effects of the cyanide gas because Blackwood had already fed them the antidote on the night the U.S. ambassador died, and Blackwood had escaped his grave by simply paying a policeman to shatter his tomb's cover and glue it back together. As Sherlock explains his deductions on the case, a broken block from the bridge falls on Blackwood, making him fall and hang to his death from the tower bridge. Back at 221B Baker Street, Sherlock explains to Watson and Mary exactly how Blackwood had survived his original hanging by wearing a noose with a hidden hook that had distributed his weight to his waist. Sherlock also figures out that Blackwood had faked his death by consuming a substance made from the rhododendron, which allowed his pulse to lower to almost nothing for a while. Sherlock had figured this out back at Riordan's lab. Irene tells Sherlock that her secret employer is Professor Moriarty, a dangerous yet brilliant man who should not be underestimated. Sherlock and Watson find out that a police officer has been murdered by a shot to the head, fired at point-blank range with a low-caliber pistol, and a part of the gas device is missing. Sherlock deduces that it is Professor Moriarty who shot the officer, and that Moriarty has taken the remote control technology that was to be used to trigger the gas device. Sherlock realizes that Irene only ran away with the cylinders to cause a diversion, so that Moriarty could steal the remote control technology. Watson and Mary leave while Sherlock says that he will solve the Moriarty case. If you enjoy this video, don't be shy hit the like button, and if you disliked it hit the dislike button twice just to be sure. You should watch the full movie. Thank you very much for watching.